This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV. The Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. What up, what up, everybody? I'm Big Waz. And I'm Nando Vila. And we are the Woke Bros. Each week, we bring you guys lefty news from a lefty perspective, man. What does that mean? That means news from the perspective of working people like you and I. Yeah, do you think the Republicans suck and do you think that the Democrats also suck? Well, you're going to like our show because we think they both suck. (laughs) Absolutely. So if you want the news, all Skrilla, no filler, each and every Thursday, please subscribe, rate, review wherever you get podcasts because the Woke Bros has their own individual podcast feed. Make sure you look up the Woke Bros, subscribe to us, rate us, review us, give us five stars and say that we're the greatest of all time. See you guys soon. Not the hell's Not the hell's thing. Not the hell's thing. A desperate. Not the hell's thing. We're really good. You notice that? I have recently. I'm continually impressed. I think we should be able to say that we're really good too. I don't think we should have to be humble about it. People want us to give them like these wars with other alleged movie podcasts. I'm not interested. Lesser than. I don't believe in punching down. Unless it's on social media. We're like the sons and foe guy. We're punching up. Yeah, we only punch up. We only punch up when someone tries to sucker punch us. Sucker punch? Qualify? Yeah. Yeah, it that's does. exactly Snyder. Okay. Is there a Snyder loophole that anything Zack Snyder makes is now officially eligible for Cinephobe no matter what? So there's a comic book where where Batman goes down on Catwoman? Canon. <laughs> you have my attention. Well, Zack Snyder posted a picture of it. Yeah, he ended the debate. But I didn't know, like, did he have that drawn or was that in a comic book? I wonder if it's from his personal collection. Oh, like he gets like certain things done for him. If you're making a four hour Justice League, you don't think you can have a comic book made? That's true. Oh, I see. Like I saw people talking about like how Batman wouldn't go. Like someone made a meme about Spider-Man not going down. I'm like, what the fuck are y'all talking about? Heroes don't do that. I mean, yeah, they took it out. They took it out of like a Harley Quinn thing. Yeah. Harley Quinn animated series. They wouldn't let him do it. <laughs> Why would that happen in an animated series? No, no, don't do it. No, no please. I mean, useless. <laughs> We're four hours in and he's already drunk. He's got to do something at 1 a.m. He's going to be drunk. Cinephobe is going to be at 1 a.m. And he's not going to be able to do it. Like, what? Are you kidding me? He's hammered. I mean, out. Out. Get out of here. Get a hobby. Knit something. Go for a walk. Previously on Cinephobe. How am I supposed to go back to the me before all of this pain? Excuse me. We're new in town and we've never had sex before. Would you give us a hand? I would have rather seen his cock. Out of way, Bobby! This episode in this movie... Exist. You bet your sweet ass I saw a lawnmower man. Oh, Teddy. I'll call some guys from my neck of the woods. We're not talking, Brooke, about a couple of queens who know a few grapples. We're talking about Polacks that don't have a goddamn future. You have a stupid heart and a stupid brain. Regular Einstein. You think I'm a coward? You're wrong. I'm not a coward. You're the coward. I'm not a coward. I love cocaine. I do it all the time. I'm sorry, you guys. I don't mean fag like homosexual. I mean fag like retard. I got nukes shooting out of my dick right now. I've got so many nukes. Dick nukes. I mean, look at this buffet of ass. Mouth to dildo, dildo, ass, ass to ass. Hi, Brant. Anal bees. I'm the goddamn talent, Maze. Look, Gene, I've never told anyone this before. My head! But I can suck my own dick. And I do it a lot. 1038. This movie is shit. You don't know shit. Holy shit, bro. I had the same note, too. I swear to God, both of you guys are the biggest fucking liars in the world. Howdy, howdy, howdy. You should 
have saved this for the train. All right, au revoir, Luban. Lisa, Solid. Oh, I mean, why don't you just be like a regular person and dream about regular threesomes? Like Holmes. Give me some soul, oh. kisses, baby. Hey, beautiful. What? Oh, dang. Oh, oh. I can't indulge this comparison to a person that Amin may or may not know in a movie that has nothing to do with this podcast. That's some 20th century shit, bitch. We will tangle ass. Say hi to your mother for me. And you will lose. What's the end game? Okay, now everyone's dead. What is fucking Spence from Ballers? Who cares what the end game is? Garbage! I am proud. McCavity! <laughs> Cinefo, the podcast where we break down the movies you're afraid to admit you love. I'm Zach Harper. That's Amin Al Hassan. That's Anthony Mays. Patreon.com slash count the dings. If you want to listen to the Father's Day episode of Daddy's Home 2, starring Mel Gibson. Patreon.com slash count the dings. You can get all the extra stuff that we've got, not just for Cinefo, but across the entire Count the Dings network. I saw a review saying we talk about four Christmases. Where's the four Christmases episode? It's on the Patreon. Bitch, it's on the Patreon. Okay. Review. If you got one, review it. Apple Podcasts, five stars. Say whatever the fuck you want in the review. Just leave a five star one. We love your movie suggestions in there. I'm going to fire one up right now. From Samp Simpson. Love it. Five stars. Robin Hood, Men in Tights just qualifies at 40%. Would we'll love a pod on that one. Jake Bortles, Grandma's Boy. This is unfairly rated at 16%. This movie is amazing. I can just tell you now, everybody, we're going to do Grandma's Boy at some point. Amin's going to hate it. Amin's already phobed it. I don't know. I've never seen it. You're going to hate it. I know you are. Got to do the Chris Rock, Anthony Hopkins joint, Bad Company from Piss Sports Fan. I remember that one. <laughs> My twin brother was CIA. <laughs> La Pomp. I can feel the tension in my plums. Movie? Over the top. Over the top's gotta happen. File. Still on month. If you have a submission, submit it. Just needs to be 40% or lower on Rotten Tomatoes for the audience or the critic score. It's superhero month. Amin picked Daredevil. I picked Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Maze picked League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. You, the listeners, voted, and for some reason, you trusted Amin with the next pick. And so we're watching the 1998 action sci-fi Nick Fury Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. I have a lot of questions. This is the least superhero of the superhero movies we've watched, but my genre is still superhero. (laughs) I think my main question that I asked probably about 20 minutes into this movie was, when they decided to like redo this whole Marvel Cinematic Universe, all these characters would be here. Iron Man's going to be there. Thor's going to be there. The Incredible Hulk's going to be there. And Nick Fury's going to be there. Do you think somewhere... Somewhere in the world, Hasselhoff said to himself, <laughs> about time. A hundred percent. I'll clear my schedule. <laughs> yeah. What, what was he going to do? Clear his schedule from nothing? <laughs> Who is this movie for? Ooh, oh, man. I don't know. <laughs> I, it can't be people who read the comics. I, I know that. Much. Well, there are going to be some disagreements for that in the reviews then. They were trying to launch it as a show. Right. Yeah, this has the feel of a made-for-TV movie. And the reason why I say that is... Because it's a made-for-TV movie. That and also the, the convenient commercial breaks. Even <laughs> right. though there are no commercials. Yes, there are no commercials. But- Every set piece <laughs> ends with a, a perfect setup for a cliffhanger into a commercial. Yep. Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. stars David Hasselhoff. Hoff. Welcome to Cinephobe. In 1998, Hasselhoff was in Baywatch Prime as Mitch Buchanan, and it just wrapped up Baywatch Nights as a spinoff. <laughs> you also may remember him from Knight Rider, Dodgeball, and Click. He also was just coming off of the Nightman oh. TV movie. It's the Nightman, the feeling so wrong and right, man. The feeling so wrong and right, man. I can't fight you, man, when you come inside me and pin me down with your strong hands. And I become the night, the passionate, passionate nightmare. Lisa Renna is also in this movie. 
She was in Melrose Place and Days of Our Lives. She was also in one episode of Baywatch. And now she's on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I believe she was called a delightful exoskeleton one time, my family guy, but I might have that mistaken. That might be Maria Shriver. I don't know. <laughs> Repeat offender, Sandra Hess. I wish I knew how to quit you. Oh, man. You may remember her as Sonya Blade in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Do I ever. That's right. <laughs> also, oh my God. In- <laughs> That's what started this whole journey was <laughs> we found the Nick Fury movie in her resume. Yep. <laughs> I was about to say, I mean, you didn't recognize her, but then I realized they probably all look the same to you. Yo, there's a scene in here. Where you thought it was her? Highlights it. You th- no, no. I did too, actually. I thought- <laughs> okay. She was also in Encino Man, an episode of Baywatch Nights, theme, and the TV movie Beastmaster 3, The Eye of Braxis. Neil Roberts, who was on six episodes of Charmed and one episode of Baywatch Nights. Oh, wow. <laughs> Gary Chalk, who has 414 actor credits on IMDb. Attaboy. He was in The Fly 2, Freddy vs. Jason, and 8 Below, along with just about every cartoon that's ever existed over the last 30 years. He's Optimus Prime in a lot of Transformer cartoons. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I know him. Yeah. Ron Canada from Wedding Crashers, National Treasure, and The Human Stain. Who is he in in Wedding Crashers? He's the butler in Wedding Crashers who has to deal with the foul-mouthed Nana. That's who Ron Canada is? That's Ron Canada, yeah. Not Michael Vick's alias when he checks into hotels. (laughs) That's his NAFTA counterpart, Ron Mexico. It was directed by Rod Hardy. He directed a ton of TV series for a couple episodes here and there. Let me guess, one of those TV series, Baywatch Nights? I Actually, I don't know. If that's true, because he had so many, but yeah, probably. He was coming off 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, a two-part miniseries with Michael Caine as Captain Nemo. Michael Caine. And future cinephobe Robinson Crusoe with Pierce Brosnan. Repeat offender. I wish I knew how to quit you. David S. Goyer wrote this movie. Oh, boy. You remember him from Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, and Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance. Longest titles of any repeat offender. (laughs) He also did Death Warrant, the Blade franchise, and Kickboxer 2. Oh, he did Kickboxer as well? No, 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 the second Kickboxer. No, he didn't. He also didn't do the first Crow, but he did Crow City of Angels. He did. He does like long titles, doesn't he? Synopsis for Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agent Nick Fury is asked to fight the menace of Hydra after exiling himself in the Yukon since the end of the Cold War. Is that where he was? Yeah, it said Yukon on the screen. (laughs) Yeah, it's a, it just it types it right across in PowerPoint presentation. Yukon. I fell asleep multiple times. That's in the first three minutes. It's, a, it's the first scene. I was tired. Am I too soon? <laughs> Tagline from one of the writers of Batman Begins. Yeah, retroactive tagline. Six million dollar estimated budget. It was a TV movie released on USA Networks. So I don't know what it did. Probably nothing. And then there were some DVD sales in 2008, I believe. Can we get the ratings? Can we look up what the ratings were? Go for it. Let me do that. <laughs> Before we jump into this movie and listen, and you listen to the rest of this podcast, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. is available on YouTube. The whole thing. This is the second movie we, because we tried to watch Teddy Rex on YouTube, right? And it wasn't good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How did we watch Teddy Rex? Archive.org. Is that how we're going to have to watch Eddie? No, Eddie's not on archive.org. I remember Jesus looking Christ, when man. we were trying to find Eddie. Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. receives 50% from the critics. But they won't post it. On two reviews. But only 15% from the audience on over 5,000 ratings. How many critics' reviews do you need until Rotten Tomatoes recognizes you? Three? I know it's more than two. I mean, would you like the positive or the negative reviews? That's half full kind of guy, boys. Give me the positive. Well, everybody's just thinking about the negative. Well, I think the glass is half full. Everybody thinks it's half empty. It's hard to find these ratings, by the way. On a USA Network TV movie from 1998? <laughs> yeah, I'd imagine so. Drag on onto love of rex.arts.movies.reviews. Five out of ten. Ugh. User Steve D. Three out of five stars intentionally over the top and fun user brett w three out of five stars you know it is pretty funny that not too long ago the best marvel could do movie wise is licensing out their characters for low budget made for tv movies this movie is amazing in its own right and sandra hess sonia from mk annihilation plays the same viper character from last year's the wolverine hasselhoff is oddly all right in the role 
I guess this was just after Baywatch ended in a long while before the drunk trying to eat a cheeseburger phase. <laughs> Written by David S. Goyer, the writer who would go on to do Blade, the Dark Knight trilogy, and now the Superman vs. Batman movie. So you might expect a good bit more than what it is, but worth it for doing MST3K style, if nothing else. That's what we do. Kind of? Sort of. No, we're not, we're not supposed to look not like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> User Caleb C. Three and a half out of five. This campy ride is something not to be missed by any fans of cheesy camp films. The only thing missing here is the grindhouse treatment. I felt they could have had a lot more cheese here, and a lot more could have been done with this. I figured they had a certain budget, though, considering it is a made-for-TV film, so they could only do so much. For what it's worth, everyone does pretty much rock the heck out of these characters. And yes, oh boy, the acting is pretty bad, but it all just works very well for what it is. Plus, it actually does make sense. Any fan of Hasselhoff, is sure to love this as well, just for his over-the-top greatness. They could have done so much more with this, and it made so much sense. User Adam E, four out of five stars. Do you love the Hoff? <laughs> Do you love really cheesy made-for-TV movies? Do you like movies very loosely based on Marvel comics? <laughs> then this is for you. If not, then knock at least two stars off this rating straight away. The Hoff plays bad as Nick Fury trying to stop Hydra and looking really gruff. He sounds gruff. He walks gruff. And he shoots lots of people. It's cheesy, but it's still fun. To be honest, your enjoyment will really come out of how much you like David. If he does your head in, then avoid it. But if you are a fan, you'll love him chewing up the scenery with a voice that sounds like it's had too many whiskeys and stubble. He looks the shit. Good cheesy fun and well better than the Captain America and Justice League TV movies that came out. Whoa. There's a Captain America TV movie. Oh, boy. It's like 1990 or something. Oh. <laughs> User Alex, How much longer is Superhero Month? User Alex T, three and a half out of five. I can't believe this was actually good. User William T, four out of five. David Hasselhoff sells it as Nick Fury in this incredibly campy made for TV movie. The villains, especially the female head of Hydra, overact the parts and the German accents are so bad that I almost cried from laughing. Don't go into this expecting anything other than a campy 1998 made-for-TV movie starring the Hoff, and you will thoroughly enjoy yourself. Did Zach write that, uh, that, that review? User Private U. Private U. Three out of five stars. Private you. Hasselhoff pulled it off. Right facial features. Story stuck pretty true to the comics. Overall, thought it was decent. And then last one. User David K. Three out of five stars. I liked it. I'm a fan of the comics, but I do say it was pretty lame. But you cannot disagree. Hasselhoff is Nick Fury. Biatch, deal with it, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> oh, snap. Served. More on that in the trivia, by the way. Negative reviews. At this point of time, my thought on critics not liking stuff is, then turn it off, you fucking weirdo. You have so <laughs> many options. People who watch an entire project to hate on it, man, it is so weird to me. Felix Vasquez Jr. of Cinema Crazed. You have to wonder how different today's live-action comic book landscape would look if Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., took off as a hit series, don't you? I don't think it would have affected a single goddamn thing. Not a damn thing. User Marcus W., one out of five stars. One for completists only. That's us, the completists. User Ronnie C., <laughs> half star out of five stars. Ten minutes I watched. Should have done the dishes instead. Fine. I'll help you do the damn dishes. Oh, come on. You know what? No, that's, see, that's not what I want. You just said that you want me to help you do the dishes. I want you to want to do the dishes. Why would I want to do dishes? Why? User Scott G, one out of five stars. Cheap 90s knockoff. Captain America and Fantastic Four got the same treatment. Hasselhoff is a terrible fury. Typical 90s straight-to-video effort. Bad in many ways. There really isn't much going for it apart from the laughable lines. Avengers 2012 coming up and possible Nick Fury film. So really no need to see this bad film. User James D, half star out of five. Wow. Wow. Talk about your ham and cheese. What a rebel without a cause. User Andrew N, one out of five. One night at 4.30 a.m. I could not sleep. So I turned on the TV and on Fox was David Hasselhoff with an eye patch. Oh I was God. so confused, but had to keep watching. Another five minutes went by and I couldn't believe this amazing Marvel character. Was such a shitty movie. Hilariously bad, though. Worth watching once. More of a positive review than negative. But. Yeah. User Paul C, one out of five. David Hasselhoff as Nick Fury. No. Hasselhoff was a horrible actor in this film, and his body was very tight and uncomfortable when fighting. Some of the other cast was okay. The storyline would only make sense if you read the comic. 
The best was that Nick Fury's eyes closed shut under his patch because it was cut. Yet in some scenes, you can see it open through the patch. Wow. Wow. User Clifford B, one out of five. Die, die, die. Eye patch, die. What more can be said? Oh, yeah. Hasselhoff, please. No more eye patch. <laughs> User John T, one and a half out of five stars. So super ultra lame. And then last one, user Patrick S, two out of five stars. My friend Eric will love this only because this is the white Nick Fury and not the Samuel L. Jackson Nick Fury. Wow. He's throwing his friend Eric in under the racist bus there. For real? Yeah. <laughs> Wholeheartedly, two hands. I think Eric is on IMDb or whatever. Like you read these, you're like, what the fuck, dude? Yo, what the hell? I said I didn't like changing lanes. That doesn't make me racist. <laughs> I just like the story of Hoosiers. I don't. I recognize it's problematic, but I just like. I like you know, Hackman. That's good. Coach Carter. He just kind of yelled at him. I mean, what's your first note? First note is yeah. Let's get right into it. Helicopters, movie name, Trinity Base. No bullshit. Nick Fury TV movie got the Marvel comic treatment, or was that later put in? I feel like that's got to be later because we see a really weird Marvel logo at the end. Oh yeah, we did. It's got like. <laughs> like spider-man is like africa and that that globe at the end globe you notice that that was some shit this is absolutely a tv movie i thought it was out of focus as it rapidly flies over a body of water except the name graphics were clear so i think they just shot this in like 90p we're at trinity base cryogenic section this shit looks like a home movie no (laughs) notice that the way the camera moves yeah we get a screen saying baron wolfgang von strucker Brooker. And Private Vaughn monitors Chamber 3 and refreshes the function. They're so lazy that all they type is refresh function. Which function? What am I supposed to do there? Okay, I got this confused because they have like an outline of a body and it's like things are happening to it. Yeah. And I thought that was Private Vaughn's body. Oh, gotcha. I wrote, Private Vaughn has cheeks. <laughs> oh, that's Baron Wolfgang Von Strucker. Got some cheeks. Von Strucker some von chica there's a corpse in this chamber and <laughs> and then a dude in blue fatigues walking around the cryogenic section now we cut to a helicopter shot over a forest the look on the frozen dude's face priceless uh, he looks exactly like john voight in anaconda <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the type of faces we're getting from this this corpse you did text us tell me this isn't john voight <laughs> in all caps <laughs> Hydra 1 and Hydra 2 are in flight. They're scanning the river. And we're back to this corpse in the chamber. This movie is edited by someone who's named, and I quote, Drake Silly Man. And Ron Canada. This looks like a Dean Cain movie I watched once. He's a scientist trying to stop dinosaurs in a military facility or some shit. And so I looked it up, and it's actually called Dragon Fighter. He was stopping dragons. And the synopsis is workers in an underground lab fight for their lives against a clone dragon they created. It's really good. Every underground lab in all of these movies looks exactly the same. Back to the facility and a guy. This killed me, man. This, guy, this killed this me. This guy who walks Ooh. in. Sergeant Exposition. Shout talking his lines. The first line of the movie and this guy's ass is fully on. Hell of a way to earn our keep, isn't it, Vaughn? Babysitting a corpse. Not since Troll 2 have words sounded stranger coming out of someone's mouth. Oh my god. I paused it and was crying. Crying laughing. Kudos on the German accent on saying Von Strucker because he got that. Nailed it. Von Strucker! Last of the boogeyman. Von then shoots this guy in the stomach. Mid-exposition. I also thought it was pretty funny that he got Von Strucker right, but he got boogeyman wrong. (laughs) He did. Also, as he dies, or I think he's dying here. Not quite dead. He is both simultaneously ass fully on and ass fully off. I don't know how to explain it. There's one cheek that has separated itself from the rest of his body. Vaughn disengages the defensive grid. Laziest terms possible here. Helicopters are heading back. Vaughn throws on a gas mask and grabs something from the vents. And then the voice modulation guy is still alive. A big surprise there. Vaughn unleashes gases into the vent system. Guards are dropping left and right. A SWAT team with a clear plastic coffin comes in. And that's when voice modulation guy is wearing a, a gas mask all of a sudden. Yep. And which, which he apparently just had. He walks, he walks through the corridor. 
<laughs> let us rock and let us roll. roll. His ass is back on. He gets shot and kicked, and he's still not quite dead. <laughs> but they only shot him in the leg? And then he's kind of out of breath and, and dying. <laughs> and Sonya Blade rolls up on him. Nick, take care <laughs> of her. His last words, Nick. Now we're in the Yukon. Type that on the screen. There's a mine <laughs> shaft and inside. It means already asleep. Inside it is the Hasselhoff pickaxe in the wall. Why? Just the random wall. Why? I don't know. If you want to do some mining, like go down into the mine shaft. Why are you just hitting the wall outside your room? I need to ex- try to explain, and you let me know if this makes sense. The way he has this cigarello in his mouth. It looks like how Dr. Evil holds his pinky up to his mouth, except there are no hands involved. Does that make sense? This is one of those times where I really wish we were a video medium. We'd spend the next hour on the screenshot. And not even the screenshot, the video of him turning <laughs> slowly towards the camera. Yeah. Because that's what I, had me rewinding, rewatching, and laughing again and again. <laughs> it wasn't quite like the cigarette on his mouth is pretty comical, but it's just the way his face moves so slowly turning towards you see the eye pad and i i don't know what effect they were going for here other than just laugh your ass off and then there's something scraping at the door scraping at the door off grabs a gun and some holsters he starts hiding in the tunnels from whoever busted in and then the guy runs away unknowingly from Hoff. And then he lights up a new cigarillo. It's literally the flimsiest thing ever. Just knock the bitch down. It's not even a wall. <laughs> it is literally just a piece of sheet metal with a raggedy door cut into it. And the guy's like shaking the sheet metal <laughs> like he's trying to shake the door open. But I'm just like, if you just lightly tap it, the whole thing will fall down. Hoff walks out of the mine shaft, kicks the dude in the stomach, punches him, and then flips him to the ground. This pilot has my British accent. Can a fury, sir? Oh, my God. A special agent Alexander Pierce. So that's Robert Redford's character in Winter Soldier. What? He is just stunned and just so thankful to be getting kicked to shit by Nick Fury. Hoff helps him up. His intelligent priority code has been reactivated, and they want him to return to his post. It's S.H.I.E.L.D. A hover jet pilots down, and why Why the POV shot for 15 seconds of inside the cockpit as this thing lands? It is one of the cheapest effects you've ever had on Cinefolk. This airship is two-dimensional. <laughs> it is. Well, unfortunately, Pierce, you're going to have to tell S.H.I.E.L.D. to shovel it up their collective end zones. They put me out to pasture five years ago. Didn't they brief you on that particular piece of intel? Oh, that's not Hoffman saying that. That's Nick's position fury talking. Order comes from the president himself. Well, the answer is the same. Why don't you take your blow dryer and get the hell out of my afternoon, son? Him calling the ship a blow dryer was so accurate. Wait, did he say get the hell out of my afternoon, comma, son, S-O-N? Or did he say afternoon, son? Oh, oh, it was afternoon, son? Yeah, like, like he's sunbathing. He was in a fucking tunnel. <laughs> That's his sunlight, all right? At what part was he sunbathing? Right right this instant. Lisa Rinna walks up from the blow dryer. Oh, they sent you too? Contessa Valentina de Allegro Fontana. So they sent Quite you. Quite a mouthful when you try to wrap your tongue around it. Don't let the blue blood fool you, Pierce. That was an old hand at the espionage game, aren't you? Sexpionage. Sex position. Did any of that make sense? It did, and it didn't. I want to point out, for those who watched The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, this is the same character that Julie Louis Dreyfus plays. Yep, Nick Fury's old flame. Got some tension coming up between Samuel and Julia Louis Dreyfus. Been a long time, Nick. You don't look any worse for wear. We need you back. Maybe I've gotten used to the wilderness. Maybe you're full of it. Hydra's back in the game. Ah, that's impossible. Von Strucker's dead. I killed him myself. Yesterday, Hydra stole Von Strucker's body and killed Clay in the process. Damn. Hydra's sending Nick a message, and he says, Looks like I heard it! Exactly like that. Then there's Strucker exposition on a monitor about his education. Yeah, why do I don't need his education? I don't care that he has a two year medical certification or a three year degree, a master's. He's applying for a job. Theory tells us he lost an eye to Von Strucker. Eye's position. Pierce kisses his ass a little bit. This is his first field assignment. He gives his resume to Fury, and Fury asks how, how his needlepoint is. I'm just blowing smoke up your hoo ha. Doesn't hoo ha mean vagina? Yeah, that's, that's, I wrote the same note too. Whoa, bro. 
The 2D blow dryer docks with the 2D helicarrier, and we're at Shield Headquarters, Supreme Headquarters International Espionage Law Enforcement Division. They changed that name, that acronym, didn't they? Yep, this is the original acronym. The docking is just a child moving to action figure vehicles, right? That's all that is? That's probably a little more complex than what they did, actually. My next question, was the $6 million budget just for Hasselhoff's blow? Because he's high as a kite in this thing. <laughs> is he? Isn't he? Welcome to Cinnabo. Welcome to Cinnabo. Barry lights another cigarillo on board, and we find out that's illegal. He's smoking in front of a no smoking sign. The elevator won't move without scanning both of his eyes. That is just the dumbest joke. <laughs> they can't override it. Fury shoots the control panel, and that makes the elevator work for some reason. We should call back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> call back for no reason. <laughs> Dude, they welcomes him in. They embrace. There's tension. He says, meet a new recruit. When she touches his hand, she says he's thinking of Clay Quartermain. She's a mind reader. She's one of those ESPers. Natural ability was augmented with implants. Then he checks out her wreck. Yeah, and she says, neural implants. And I just want to point out, that's happened to me before. Where <laughs> it's a girl who worked as a dental hygienist or technician or whatever. And she's talking about implants. And I was like, wow, they really did a good job. Like, no, dental implants. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Misogyny! Yeah. Oh, my God. But the other thing is, this whole scene, like, as he enters the S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters and introducing characters by saying their names to one another is the highest form of exposition. <laughs> Nicholas Yuri, Jack Bennington. Wow. <laughs> How long has it been? Like, what, all of that shit? Uh, it must have been 10 years since you got kicked out of S.H.I.E.L.D., huh? Pure, uncut exposition. I mean, this is straight from Bolivia. Like, just snort it up. Put it right into your veins. Is Hoff doing a Kurt Russell impersonation? Like a Snake Plissken? Yeah. Yeah, he's like, who else has an eye patch? Hoff hates Pincer. The new director of S.H.I.E.L.D. What's Pincer? He's the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. No, he's the director of exposition. <laughs> Pincer gave him the pink slip before and the world has changed since he ran off with all due respect if the world had changed you wouldn't need people like me director now would you and then they make out ferociously and put out that cigar they were real close to each other Pincer sucks dude oh my god I know we have to have like the authority figure that the brash reckless agent has to clash with but this is the worst trope here's the thing we don't we don't need that he could just be the director yeah we can find a way to build some tension elsewhere i want to hear you guys everyone give me your best david hasselhoff has nick fury impression of this line so we meet again fury i'm well, not surprised pincer guys like you tend to cling to the bowl no matter how many times you flush guys like you tend to cling to the bowl no matter how many times you flush Guys like you tend to cling to the bowl no matter how many times you flush. Guys like you tend to cling to the bowl no matter how many times you flush. It's not here yet, but I have a note that tells you exactly what Nick Fury sounds like in this movie. Leave a review, five-star review in the Apple Podcast of which Nick Fury impersonation you'd like better. They walk into what I can only describe as an electricity lab. <laughs> warehouse full of tesla coils yeah that was my note ron canada happy to see him his favorite mad scientist there you go exposition the mad scientist of exposition you're uncut exposition about a gun it'll only work in your hands you can only snort this with a hundred dollar bill guys like anything less is uncivilized a latex position face mask that they put on a robot head it's a prototype lmd life model decoy then there's a face being put on a robot and I wrote, is this fucking thing supposed to be Nick Fury? Oh, man. I was just like, ah, I'm waiting for this robot payoff. I'm waiting for it. I was so, I knew it was going to pay oh, off. Oh, wait. I mean, did you think this was going to come back? I could have never forecasted this. <laughs> this is I, just in the wake of Mission Impossible when you just you are supposed to be able to take any latex face for granted. The robot's flexing. Not a bad looking guy, huh? Not a bad looking guy, huh? It just keeps parroting <laughs> everything he says. It talks and moves like him. It's also got two eyes. They show the video of Clay dying from his perspective. Sonya gives us some exposition on Nick being his boyhood chum. She knows he's watching it now. Revenge is hers. This is only the beginning. It's Andrea Von Strucker. 
Who the hell is that? Who the hell is that? You're telling me that monster had a daughter? Tell me Von Strucker had a daughter? And I realize what he sounds like. He sounds like unforgivable. You guys remember that on YouTube? Give me a chicken sandwich. Some waffle fries. (laughs) Waffle fries. (laughs) For free. Oh, my God. She said, oh, Mike, what do you want to drink? I'm like, (sighs) give me a Dr. Pepper, bitch. Later on in the evening, take the silver ball. Play some video games or something. She act like she wasn't having a good time. I said, bitch, you ain't no nerd. I could have sworn you were. She said, I like to go shopping. I was like, bitch, not on this date, because I ain't got no money. And you won't give me the money you got. <laughs> you want to run out of movie? I said, bitch, go get me Dr. Shivago. <laughs> you a son, too, Warner. It zooms in on him, and it just looks like a puppet from Team America World Police. His fucking crazy <laughs> eyes. So much to the point. That I only refer to him as Team America the rest of these notes. <laughs> They're bringing terrorist groups together. They got their dad's corpse for the death's head virus? Solid name. It was going to be Hitler's doomsday weapon. Coronavirus exposition. The virus bonded with Von Strucker cells. Dr. Zola is still alive after doing 30 years in prison. He's in a safe house in Berlin with everybody looking for him. Cut to Hydra HQ. Sonia and Team America have some tension with their father's chamber. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. Got him in a steampunk phone booth display case. Not diesel punk? No, it's not diesel punk. I asked the question, is this a Father's Day movie that we missed? (laughs) The poppy talk does kick up later on. There is definitely some poppy talk in this movie. This movie might have hit, check the boxes with most regularity of exposition, tension, banter, poppy talk, and what else do we have? What's an ongoing... Misogyny! <laughs> racism? We got some of that, too. <laughs> I mean, they are Nazis, so racism works. Did you guys notice that all the henchmen look like the Invisible Man from <laughs> League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Yes, indeed. Mixed with Blue Man Group, I mean. Because they're all bald white men. Yes. Time for the Hydra Terrorist Zoom meeting. Cairo Terrorist is mad about the time difference. He was asleep. Team America has a massive scarf and a shirt that only has one button done. This is when she really unleashes the accent, man. And boy, is it some kind of accent. Look at you. My father's tusted lieutenant. I am disgusted. How dare you? Silence! I see the remnants of what was once the world's greatest terrorist organization. Squabbling like animals for table scraps. Her German accent is the exact same as my British accent. And then during this speech, I'm getting some real Ricky Bobby, I don't know what to do with my hands energy towards the end. Very soon, Hydra will be in possession of the most dangerous weapon ever created. Well, there's some ass on here and ass off. Again, same time. Ass off in the sense of the cheeks, which there are zero of. Her ass going on is every time she opens her mouth. They have someone kidnapped. It's a lieutenant from London. She shoots him and she comes each time she fires the gun. Did you notice that the gun has four bullet chambers? Yes. Like one of those prostitute guns. Austin Powers gun. Does it shoot four bullets at a time? I don't know. But yes, there's a lot of orgasming in this movie. We need a term for orgasming. Coming? No, like for unintentional orgasming. No, not like that. (laughs) Crazy. Like, I mean, like... (laughs) The actor thinks that acting is just basically faking like you're coming. Actgasming? Uh, actgasming, or should we call it when Harry met Sally? She Harry's? She Harry meets Sally's? She's Sally. She Harry met Sally's? Harry met Sally, yeah. She'll have what she's having. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> I like that, yeah. My next note, is there a mannequin in a suit guarding her? <laughs> Your blue man group, whatever? I thought it was a mannequin because it didn't move. And then I noticed they were fucking everywhere. Yeah. The invisible men. Nobody objects to her leadership now. We are the soldiers of anarchy. And it is time that the world feared us once again. And then I'm pretty sure Team America is trying to fuck his own sister. Yeah, nice scarf, bro, by the way. He looks like Cyril O'Reilly from Oz. Here we go. That was Ryan O'Reilly's brother who was brain damaged. It was a boxer. Brain damaged in the ring, then killed somebody, I guess, in the ring. 
And so he gets sentenced to, to prison because why not? Yeah, the Targaryens from Game of Thrones just ripped off this family, the Von Struckers. The Viper has chosen a small island off the coast of New York. Then she looks straight into the camera and says, Manhattan. And she's so pleased with herself. Yeah. I thought she was going to say Fire Island. <laughs> Nick and Renna need to wait for someone from Interpol. Then Renna Exposition gives us Clay and Nick history. Clay and Nick definitely fucked at some point in their lives. So walk down exposition lane with Lisa Renna. Someone's getting shot and falls down the stairs, and it's one of the mannequins. Fury and this woman recite some shit. Oh. He's talking like a pirate, kind of. He just keeps going. He flexes. He's like, I could keep going all day. You yeah. want more quotes for no reason? The beautiful woman is going to follow them to the safe house, and they're going to take the subway. I don't know why that was necessary. Oh, I guess because they go through the wall. Whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> While being chased, they run through a hologram wall. That was interesting. I've never done that before. There is some great banter as they're running for their lives from yeah. machine gun wielding terrorists. Seat belts fastened. Trade tables in the upright position. By the way, the Interpol agent will have what she's having once she goes through the wall. Now they're in with Dr. Zola. Zola is worried about being held illegally. Reproduction of the virus would take him mere hours. He's really humble when he says that death's head is the perfect weapon, you know. <laughs> Kate goes to read his mind and she sees visions of nuclear destruction with her ass fully on. Also. Rena's ass fully on. She'll have what she's having. I have never seen anything so evil. She does the classic roll your eyes back into your head. That's how you know that you're an esp -er. She couldn't pick up anything. Someone's already been inside his head. They set a post-hypnotic trap for me. I thought she said a post-it note trap, and I was like, what the fuck does that mean? I thought it was post-Alizé. <laughs> Racist. I can't understand what she's saying. I'm not going to rewind it. I didn't rewind this movie once, and if I missed it, I just didn't give a shit. By the way... Not the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's really so good. Not the whole thing. That's gotta come back. That's gotta be. That's gotta be a recurring bit, man. I don't even know where. I'm getting DMs constantly with me. <laughs> no matter what the fuck I post on Instagram, it doesn't matter. I'm just getting Not the whole thing. constantly. Oh man, yo. By the way, Lisa Renna, zero cheeks. Jesus Christ. It's not not a good movie for cheeks. You think they cast her based on her fake orgasm? Renna? No, the the ESP. -er. She was in an episode of Baywatch Night, so I think that's why they cast her. <laughs> a real orgasm. Got it. Gail says there's Hydra outside and inside the safe house. She wants to meet privately, and then there's a commercial break. And then when we come back, she's waiting upstairs. There's a close-up of her fishnets, and she's got the big ruby ring. Obviously... She is Hydra. And she's touching herself yeah. much in the same way that Carla Gugino was touching herself in Kiss of Death. Nope. Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes. Shit. Racist. Who is seduced by this? Me. The Hoff. If it's Gugino? Oh, my God. Absolutely. She says, is it true what women say about you? Depends on if you talk to one of my ex-wives or my mother. I don't know what that meant. He wants a rain check on the heavy breathing, wants to know the spy. She's the spy! She puts a joy buzzer on his face. <laughs> yeah, electrocutes him with a joy buzzer. <laughs> she straddles him. She kisses him. <laughs> He's kissed with the kiss of death. Ah! Ah! They said it! She sprays her face, and it's Sonya Blade. This doesn't seem to be a very efficient method of killing people. No! What do you mean? It worked great for Poison Ivy. Oh, that's true. Poison Ivy did it. That's right. It's one of those days. <laughs> But then when she sprays the thing... This is so funny. I don't get it. <laughs> it's the same person. They didn't even do the latex mask. She sprays her face back, and now she's a different person. Is she? And she had a pretty decent British accent, but now we're back to the horrific German accent. My note, Amin doesn't know the face changed. <laughs> Absolutely not. I was like, <laughs> so why is she spraying on her face and nothing's happening? And then Hoff is like... <gasps> I'm like, oh, <laughs> the same person. This racism is killing me. <laughs> and then she ran away like Jack Black. Yeah, she did. Her, her legs, legs kicked <laughs> up. 
Revenge is hers and Zorla is too. He passes out. Now he's on a stretcher. She left a note. He got bit by a snake. A viper. It's all downhill after the first kiss. Then he just gets up. He's fine. Ron Canada's running through a tube. Like a bratwurst. Get me out of here. Get me some mustard. This is the biggest <laughs> fucking disco MRI machine I've ever seen. You forgot the Hydra's been jerking that chain six ways to Sunday. What does that mean? Bitch. Dr. Shivago. Death is imminent with the poison. Colombian tree frog poison? There's no serum 48 hours from initial point of exposure, and they've already wasted seven hours. First symptoms have already started. I call this ex poisonition. <laughs> Are you sure this woman kissed you? Are you sure it wasn't this man? I added that last part. She must be immune. Get her blood. Might synthesize an anti-serum. Consider it done. Easy, Sussman. Consider it done. <laughs> Easy, Sussman. I'll get that vampire's blood if I have to suck it from her neck. Hasselhoff's titties are popping in that dress shirt. Oh, my God. Rina says she's worried about what happened between them. Is it a little early to be handing out the olive branch? He says what they had between them is ancient history. It's behind him. She doesn't believe him. Happened too fast between them. Clay got in the way. She got scared and walked. Into someone else's bed. Into someone else's bed. I learned that from you. Oh, relationship exposition. Pinter. He's the same jerk she walked out on years ago. Pincer's here. And then there's a second pincer in the same elevator nobody noticed. And in between the first pincer and the second pincer are some like shield soldiers or agents. One of them looks very out of shape. I'm not here to fat shame. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> you don't look like you could reach the qualifications and the standards required to be a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Fury is all leathered up, man. He's got all leather everything. He whips his gun out and fires at the fake pincer. <laughs> Fencer. Oh. Fencer's unfazed, looks up, opens his mouth. A hologram of Sonya Blade comes out. Unbelievable stuff. It's a human hologram projector. Virus set to explode in Manhattan. They have until 6 p.m. GMT. To assemble one billion dollars. One billion dollars. You 20th century bitch ass bitch. <laughs> a billion? You gonna hold all of Manhattan hostage for just a billion? Any attempt to, I think she meant to say evacuate. Yep. But I'm pretty sure she said any attempt to vacuum Manhattan will trigger the virus. Yeah, I had it written down as vacuum. Vacuum. Vacuum Manhattan. Against Hydra. There is no shield. Oh! Whoa. Fucking bars right there. Fencer explodes, goes up in flames. How do you know which one of me to shoot? I didn't. I didn't. Unforgivable. Hydra's really done it this time. Real Interpol inspector has been infected with the virus they have. Her Hoff is always looking tits and chin forward. Hold on. That's who that was? Yeah. I thought it was, uh, oh, girl. I was like, damn, I guess that kiss of that shit fucking counteracted and got back in her face. Oh, my God. Why are they all blonde? Interpol ladies in agony. Ron Canada tells the president not to tell the public. No media leaks. Pincer wants to bomb Hydra. So Pincer is the Keith David of this scenario, of course. <laughs> they believe the virus missiles will be in a rig with a refrigeration system. Pincer wants every idea moving forward. His ass is fully on. Kate tells Fury that Rennet still cares for him. Don't have to have ESP to <laughs> see that. We're running a little low on Hallmark moments. Pierce is telling Fury about a motherboard from a laptop that was found in some shit I wasn't paying attention to. They've managed to decipher. Motherboard. Unimac in the Aleutian Islands. Why did she say Greenwich Mean Time? Because that's where her base is, which is really fucking stupid on her part. We know her headquarters aren't on the East Coast. Okay, how many other fucking time zones are there? This is how we know. Because when she asked to do a radio hit, she gave him the time in Central Time. Like, <laughs> ah, I know she's not in New York. This entire bit is just some... Mwah exposition. It's like, fantastic. This should come on a silver tray with like a, a cover, like with a butler. Behind. Your exposition, sir. Fury coordinates their plan. Pincer tells him he's not fit to lead. He'll throw him in the brig. Pierce and Fury are flying and Pincer is pissed. Pister. <laughs> Talking to a dead man, Pincer. I got nothing to lose. Pincer then threatens the team. Terribly sorry, Gano, but I seem to be having a spot of bother with these headphones. Comic book coward. Coward? Why? Anthony called a comic book coward. I'm like, whoa. What does that mean? Break that fourth wall already. Jesus Christ. Shatter that bitch. Expect something extra in your Christmas stockings. If there is a Christmas, 
You find a truck in the alley in Manhattan and Rena and the only black guy in this movie pull up. My man is very unfazed by everything that's happening. By the way. <laughs> I think I found the key to being black and surviving through a movie. Like, just act like you don't give a shit. No reaction. Yeah. What you mean? Like, Dugan tells, <laughs> tells her there are two operatives in the rear. Right there. They serpentine through the alley, but never actually hide themselves. What was the point? One of the agents is galloping like a horse with his gun. I don't know if you guys caught this one, but he Everyone. legitimately hops in the I air. Everyone. It looks like Jack Black on a fucking horse in Envy. Everybody with a gun in their hands asked to run in this movie runs hilariously. Everybody. <laughs> like Hoff at one point pulls out a gun to start running. He runs and, he, and his shoulders just kind of sashay over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because he's always got tits and chin forward, even when he runs with a gun. It's that Baywatch posture. They open the truck. There's a decoy sitting in the back. Real virus truck still out there. Hoff is struggling with his health. Or maybe he's drunk. Who knows? Kate asks for some exposition on why he left S.H.I.E.L.D. When the Iron Curtain was sent to the cleaners, I was suddenly out of style. Not diplomatic enough. Because they changed the rules? For me, Kate, never were rules. Missiles have been launched at them. Impact in 20 seconds. The explosion that happens when the missiles hit is truly art. I think they drew it. That's how artistic it is. <laughs> they stuck a firecracker in a hairdryer that was hanging from a cord. That's how they made that shot. They got some red and yellow construction paper, crumpled it up, and threw it at the <laughs> Just paper. threw it at the thing. <laughs> Dugan says they lost contact. Pincer knew Fury would screw it up. And by the way, their code names are Head Nurse and Chief Surgeon. This bit Why? is too Why? much, man. They Why? really just really went to the well over and over again with I this analogy. I loved it. I loved it so much. <laughs> <laughs> One last possible truck moving away from Manhattan. They played Battleship with some coordinates. Fury, Pierce, and Kate escape the wreckage on the ground and they're outside a Hydra compound. They cut a single strand of barbed wire and break in. Yeah, they're in. That's all it takes. Let's go kick some Hydra butt. The truck Rena is chasing has five passengers and mannequins on the back. Team America's driving. It's a garbage truck. Maybe the thing that would have clued them in is that all the dude's faces are painted white. <laughs> and they got sunglasses on. Spencer says to take them out. And dusters. <laughs> Dude says he knows the area and the prevailing winds that time of year. <laughs> what? Yeah. Manhattan? You're familiar with Manhattan? You're flexing in front of everybody like, I'm real familiar with Manhattan. Not just, I know Manhattan. I know the wind, the wind direction yeah. in Manhattan this, this time of year. It'll cover Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Ohio within 10 hours. Fury and company spray away some lasers in the tunnel with Lysol? Lasers. The sprays, man. So they got a spray that can change your face and a spray that can go through lasers. But I like that because it does just get them through a lot of bullshit, right? Like, oh, man, how are we going to how are we gonna set up this shot where she changes her face? Who's ever spray herself? Okay. How are we going to get through these lasers? Let's just say they spray them. That's it. It's actually very, very economical. I wonder if there was a scene where Ron Canada was walking David Hasselhoff through all the different sprays they have at S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't think they cut anything out of what they shot. Takes, scenes, anything. And this one is Vaporize. If you need to get rid of some dog shit on your way in, <laughs> you can use this. Travel size Vaporize. Guys, this Zack Snyder thing has escalated. <laughs> because Joss Whedon, who we know him as a guy who directed Avengers, Age of Ultron, as well as some other marvel movies didn't he have some shitty things happen or something well let me tell you something there's some shitty things happening right here because oh he quote tweeted Zack snyder's canon pick with the hulk i don't know how else to say this absolutely railing some woman from the back what face down ass up that's the way we like to fuck where is this I, all right because I'm, I'm not seeing it on his twitter <laughs> <laughs> what twitter are you looking at i mean uh, yeah did, did i did the internet fool me? Are you too soon? <laughs> I think the internet fooled you. I think the internet not, fooled you. Not, this, not, is not, not, <laughs> this is not real. Now that the I read text doesn't that, even look real. Did you read the, the text? Two <laughs> <laughs> complainants gave you a piece of shit. <laughs> This is some fucking Pornhub anime porn. <laughs> not real. What did you say to start this off? Like, things have changed. 
New shit has come to light. She's having. Fellas, the sport of business means demanding excellence from your craft and your wardrobe. Your fits need to be versatile, blending timeless style and comfort so that you look as good as you feel. For that, this cuts clothing. That's right. I got the cuts t shirt, I got the cuts polo, and my favorite, I got the cuts hoodie. The material, the fabric is premium quality but it's got a minimalist aesthetic to it i like the way it looks on me but i love even more how it feels because i can wear these things i won't get too hot i won't get too cool it's just the right amount for whatever i'm trying to do take a plain tee but make it tony stark the bleeding edge of fabric technology meets the man confident enough to wear it <laughs> that's your boy wearing cuts and that can be you too. Cuts is premium with a purpose. Each piece of clothing is designed with custom engineered fabric, expertly graded for the perfect fit, arming you for every challenge and opportunity. It's what my man Steve Borelli had in mind when he created the company in 2016. He set out to create clothes ready for every occasion the modern man faces. Listen to me. I want this to be very clear. This is not just a lifestyle. It's not just clothing. It's office leisure apparel for the sport of business. Get 15% off your first order by going to cutsclothing.com slash ding. That's cutsclothing.com slash D-I-N-G for 15% off the only shirt worth wearing. Don't get left out in the cold. Get yourself some cuts. Pierce wants to take down a guard. He starts bragging about his self-defense class. Top of my class in advanced silent killing. What? Why did you become Scottish? I don't know. It's an upgrade on this dude. I laugh too hard. <laughs> my brain doesn't work too good right now. <laughs> all right. He chops a guy from behind. It does nothing. First of all, he tiptoes like a bitch. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I'm looking at it, I'm like, are you serious? You saw at Joss, and then you just, you skip past the, <laughs> the caption. You just went right to Hulk real in this woman. And you just thought, yep, looks real. We've got an escalation here, boys. I wanted it to be real. If you weren't such an idiot, I would suspect you for treason. Are you talking to a mean, or are you saying that Nick Fury line? I'll never tell. The chop doesn't work. Guy gets punched. Fury hits him, shoots him, says sorry, and throws the body down. <laughs> Fury feels something not right, and Kate feels it too. It's all been too easy. And then a bunch of guards cut them off. He turns his head, and he looks right towards the camera. Commercial break. Sonia is here. She says, you like my kissing so much? Do you have back Famella? She's got a red cape on now. Viper will still release the virus. She doesn't care about sacrificing her brother. He's always been expendable. Ah! She said it. Yeah, she said it. Yuri says he'd dance on her father's grave. Her grave is next. Sweetness. Tell me, how's Hydra's dental plan? And then he punches a guard. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Enter. I like that. And he doesn't get away. No. He's still down. They've still got guns on him. Yeah. He just punched the guy closest to him. She says to search them thoroughly. How do you think Hydra's dental plan is? I'm going to go out on a limb and say they don't have one. I don't think they have like a whole HR thing. I think it's like, hey, you're a part of Hydra. Don't agree. You're dead. Well, how do you get paid? You can probably volunteer to get your teeth replaced with like advanced evil bomb teeth or something. How did they get paid? Do you have these guys going home to a studio apartment at the end of the day, clocking out from Hydra? You're just there. Wait, hold on. Like being a no pair? Yeah, you paint your face white. You just live there? It's like being in the army. You live on base. You move into the compound, you sleep in barracks. 
You're working around the clock. Yeah. What? How do you pay your bills? You don't have bills. What bills? Hydra pays your bills. Hydra feeds you. They're feeding you. They're, they're housing, housing you. you. They're paying for your telecommunications. How do you go out on dates? You don't. You definitely don't. I mean, you're in. It's just a rub and a tug. Don't ask, don't tell. Yes, there are a lot of dates. <laughs> She wants his eye patch searched. It's flipped up. There's an electronic lock pick. There it is. I thought I left it in my other patch. And he's just squinting his eye right now. You bore me, Fury. Same note too, lady. I will give you the signal when the time comes. And it will come soon. Rita and company roll up on the truck. Fury and company are in a meat locker. He says Viper screwed up by putting them in there. He had a fever of 103, but now he's normal. Is that how science works? That's not how fevers work. No, it's not at all. If that's how fevers work, <laughs> literally no one in Scandinavia would ever catch the flu, right? They right. just throw them outside and they'll be fine. Have you ever like had the flu and gone outside in the winter? It's miserable. It's not even he said, I, I feel better now, or it's slowing down the effects. He said, I'm normal now. I'm normal. They messed up. I'm normal now. I'm normal now. Fierce apologizes for his behavior earlier. He'll resign if they survive. Fury says enough with the martyr routine. He has the makings of a good agent. Mm. And then Pierce masturbates furiously. Yes. Rena and company just walk right out in the open, trying to go up on this garbage truck. Including my guy, the galloping gunman. Galloping gunman and the one black guy. Garbage truck has the virus on it in an abandoned shipyard. If the virus is loaded in a short-range missile in the back of the truck, they couldn't miss Manhattan if they tried. And just to reinforce that, the missiles come out and we get a shot of the missiles aimed right at the Twin Towers. Too soon. They could miss Manhattan because if those <laughs> things don't hit directly onto the Twin Towers, they just fly sail, they sail clear across and go to New Jersey. Right. That angle is way too high. It's like a 45 degree angle. Especially with the winds that time of year. Southeast, baby. Yeah. You're missing those towers altogether. You'd be lucky if you hit the Statue of Liberty. We get a postcard of NYC as the background in some fake water movement. Kate and Pierce are freezing. Fury is pacing. Pincer says 30 minutes to the deadline and Dugan is worried. Team America sets up the missiles. Dugan says they need to go. Renna says they need to wait. That's when Dugan tells her they lost contact with Fury. They can't count on him. Patient needs surgery ASAP. So let's start prepping for the OR now. Love that shit. The subject is still setting up. Let's wait a few more minutes. Fury pulls out his own eyeball? Yeah, he does. And then he quotes the Bible. A little eyeball bomb, actually. If my eye offend thee, pluck it out. Relax. It's only plastic with a little Cracker Jack surprise inside. <laughs> <laughs> explosion happens and the dude falling away <laughs> acting his ass off that explosion the nexus of it went straight up his asshole there's no other explanation because <laughs> pierce and kate crouch and then he kind of splays himself over the top of both of them like he's getting searched by the cops yeah pretty much pierce knocks out a guard it worked then a mannequin finds a baseball on the ground and just starts throwing it against the wall for some reason. This fucking guy. He has the highest heels on men's shoes I've ever seen. Go time for Renna and her team. Team America is mad at the mannequin for throwing the ball. Do you mind? And instead of the ball coming back this time, it's a conveniently gray-colored grenade. Never seen a grenade before. How did they know that he, he might be messing around with a baseball? I don't know. Grenades in World War One were designed to look like baseballs or like be the size of a baseball because the assumption was every red-blooded american male knew how to throw a baseball so they'd be great at throwing grenades they couldn't help themselves <laughs> bust down they tell team america to freeze she calls him laughing boy you wouldn't dare shoot you put the whole city at risk she shoots him in the head head nurse to surgeon operation over uh, patient sedated enter <laughs> Fury walks gingerly down some stairs because he's 100 years old and fights a guy with his full ass on. Oh, he's act acting his ass all the way on in this fight. Hop is burning up. Viper's poison's getting to him. Abort code is random or some shit. She yells at the only black guy not to pull the plug. Yeah, because he's like, let me just disconnect the modem. It's like, no, could be rigged. This section of the movie is cutting every 20 seconds between the helicarrier, like back to Lisa, back to Hoff. It's exhausting. My favorite part's coming up. Oh, man. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so hyped. <laughs> I know where it is. Yeah. <laughs> Missile moves. Prepared to launch. Dugan's trying to get the abort code. Viper wishes her dad could see her now. Bobby Talk. That's when... <laughs> 
Fury <laughs> ambles in. He dives, slides across a dining room table. He belly flops on the table like it's a slip and slide. And he just goes, Ugh. <laughs> I watched this scene 15 times. <laughs> he summers. <laughs> He somersaults through the door and then he is just <laughs> shambling over. <laughs> he looks so broken getting up. And then the <laughs> belly flop. <laughs> he knocked her little four shot gun away. The somersault. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> this is his big move. He flaps his arms when he jumps into the <laughs> belly flop. Uh, to get maximum torque. <laughs> oh my god, the somersault <laughs> under the door. He looks like <laughs> Howard the Duck trying to fly. <laughs> he knocks the shit out of her. Oh my god. And then the somersault off the table, too, is the best. Oh my to god. To finish it off. A little floor routine. Zola grabs his special gun. Fury says it'll backfire. Viper kicks him. Zola then fires it. It electrocutes Zola. His wheelchair goes in reverse. We never see him again. Yep, that's it. Fury asks, what was the question? As he gets his leather pants as high as he possibly can to sweep Viper's legs as she's standing on the table. Detonation in 10 minutes. Viper yells, he's too late. I mean, he has 10 minutes. That's plenty of time. Yeah, she really jumped the gun there. Viper grabs a gun and shoots Fury in the chest. Kate and Pierce are surrounded. She mocks Fury as she leans over him. I can't hear you coming, Fury. What? No witty posts? No clever comebacks? I said revenge is mine. Don't you have anything to say? <gasps> I always heard living well's the best revenge. No quick banter. No exposition. <laughs> Perhaps some Bobby talk. It was a life model decoy. Useful toy, isn't it? Ah, callback. Fury opens the door to let them in. Door won't close. He shoots the controls and it closes. Again, this is not how any of this stuff works. Two for two, baby. Callback. If the elevator stops working, shoot it. It'll start working. If your door won't close, shoot it. The door will close. As he's restraining her, Hasselhoff is just dry humping Sonya from behind. <laughs> A lot of wriggling. A lot of wriggling and grinding going on. I felt like she was trying to get away from him in real life and he wasn't letting her. <laughs> they walk by Von Strucker's chamber. He's uglier than I remembered. You're frozen, Pop. Sickle. Get it, Andrea? Get it. Pop sickle. Pop sickle. That's the problem uh, with the Third Reich. No sense of humor. That's the problem with the Third Reich? Uh-huh. What? That's what I've always said. <laughs> It's got to take things too seriously. Fury contacts Retta. I thought you were dead. I was, but now I'm better. <laughs> He's not better yet. Dugan says to get them the abort code. Sonya won't give up the code, but Kate is reminded that she can read minds. She's an esp -er, baby. Grabs her head. Tension. So much tension. Tension. <laughs> I'll have what Viper's having in this scene. She can't get them. Hoff says to dig deep. She can do it. But he really like walks over and leans in. He's like, you can do it. Come on. And then he walks away. No, he, he stays right there. He's like, dig deep. You can do it. It was like Quagmire when Cleveland was sad because Loretta left him. And so they were trying to cheer him up. And Cleveland was like, you think you and Bonnie could kiss each other just once? <laughs> God dang! Touch, touch boobs. As they're both in the fucking throes of climax. There's a detonation in two minutes. There's so much tension with Kate and Sonya right now. Dig deep. You can do this. She's got the numbers. Wait! She got them wrong. Last one's a nine, not a six. Nine or six. It's up to Nick. Time's ticking. 69. Nine. No! 666. Six, six. Wait, I wonder if they're going to get it right, guys. Sonya grins at him. Missiles go back in the truck. The way he changed his mind. Which one is it? Nine. <laughs> no! Six! Six! <laughs> there was no, like, he did the math. No. Or, like, notice to tell. He literally just, like, I'm guessing. No, he read her face wrong. Every instinct he had there was going to blow up Manhattan or, at best, Jersey. We're okay, Nick. I always knew we would be. Like, hell, you did. He pulls out his cigarello. Score one for the free world. Nick says not to worry about the Hydra guys cutting into the door. Then S.H.I.E.L.D. shows up with a blow dryer jet. S.H.I.E.L.D. arrests the mannequins. Canada's working on it. I'll see you in hell for this. We'll do lunch. 
Alarm goes off. Another countdown. Sonia breathes heavily. 30 seconds left. Countdown stops. Sonia busts out. She gets in the chamber with her dad, and it's an escaping elevator. She kisses the glass. He shoots the lock open, looks down inside. She's gone. She's halfway to China right now. Back on the aircraft carrier, Canada fixes Nick Fury. His body is metabolizing the anti-serum. Pincer walks up to him, hasn't forgot about his breach of protocol, going for a full tribunal. Insubordination, incitement to mutiny, unauthorized use of a military vehicle. You forgot one. Attempted grievous bodily harm. <laughs> he punches him in the nose. Pincer falls with every ass in the room on him. Pincer has this weird crowd of cronies that follow him around all the time. Right. When he's on the Zoom call, he's got all these people standing behind him. And when Hoff swings on him, they all just scatter. <laughs> I thought they ducked at first, but they just run away. Hydra and S.H.I.E.L.D. are on Fury's mind. Keeps each other in business. He wants to get something straight with Rena. Maybe he lost more than his job when he parted ways with S.H.I.E.L.D. Maybe it took a dose of dying to realize. Sounds like an apology. I wouldn't go that far. Maybe I like watching you squirm. They almost kiss in Dugan cock blocks. Yes, he does. They keep calling each other swine. How long you been eavesdropping, you old swine? Long enough! <laughs> Hydra will take years to regroup. Viper's still out there. They don't have Von Strucker's body. The war isn't over. There's a whole nest of Vipers out there. Dugan gives Fury a Cuban cigar. He puts it in his jacket. He's been thinking about quitting lately. A bunch of sociopaths wanted to see him cash in his chips. Why should I help them? Is this an anti-smoking movie? I mean, they really played the long game to get that point across. That was his character arc, you know? Beginning of the movie, right? constantly chewing on cigars. End of the movie, thinking about quitting. Yeah, thinking about it. And I haven't really made up my mind. Big words for a one-eyed man. She talking about his dick? Always. He takes her outside. They're leathered up. We see the sky. She grabs his arm. We cut to a lair. Viper is walking with mannequins. I thought I lost you, father. I have walked through the fires of hell. Looked into the face of the beast. And I have returned... I think she's trying to fuck her own dad. Yo, the poppy talk tension, tension. in this scene. <laughs> really? <laughs> can you feel the tension in the air right now? Poppy call. I know I can. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. Poppy call. Getting all swollen with a light blue hue to them. Fresh and juicy, ready for the picking. Poppy call. All the school children are lining up to put them in the sack lunches. Poppy call. Hey. That plum looks good. You, can I trade it for your Twinkie? No, these are my plums. Poppy call. I want to bite into that plum and let the juice spill down my chin. You know what I mean? Poppy call. All the while. Let the world tremble this night, and she is mm. all over him. She's about to tremble tonight herself. They, wa they walk off laughing. Roll credits. Man, don't you guys wish we got, like, 20 episodes of the Hoff chasing Viper and her old dried up german father that she probably banged at some point oh my god we really got robbed what's the trivia there was nothing on imdb the only thing i have is that the teleplay was written by david s goyer several years before the film was made and goyer was not otherwise involved as he was working on the tv series sleepwalkers he was not enthusiastic about the casting of hasselhoff but in hindsight said Hasselhoff turned out to be the best thing in it. He got the joke. The script was meant to be very tongue-in-cheek, and Hasselhoff understood that. Goyer described the film overall as pretty mediocre. I don't know why they do that. Okay, you got the, I guess people didn't really respect comic books back then or whatever, but it's just like, you got the opportunity to make this shit good. Right, make it good. Oh, it was tongue-in-cheek. I feel like that's just some bullshit revisionist history. You wrote a shitty script, bro. Yes, 100%. It wasn't meant to be funny. It was just fucking terrible. Terrible dialogue, terrible plot. You're trying to make your way. You're trying to get a check. It's fine. Just admit it. If you have an admission, admit it. Preferably in our in our Apple podcast <laughs> review section. <laughs> the one note I have is that Nick Fury, the original Nick Fury in the comic books, kind of does resemble Hasselhoff. Really? Yeah. But then in the early 90s, I want to say. 2002. They rebooted the character in the comics. And they made him look like Samuel L. Jackson. That's right. In the early 90s. 2002. When they rebooted Nick Fury, making him a black man from Alabama, they made him look like Samuel L. Jackson on purpose. Oh. Because they were hoping that if it ever got optioned or whatever into a movie, that Samuel L. Jackson would play Nick Fury. How about that? That's smart. That's also shooting your shot like a motherfucker. Yeah. 
19, wait, well, let me see, when, when did this start? 1990, oh, I'm sorry, 2001. 2002. I got that wrong. But still, 2001 is still. 2002. Dude, that's like seven years away from him being cast. Breathe in through nose, out the mouth. That's on, on. That's, that's off. off. Teddy Rex, Moosey Teddy Rex. Teddy Rex, Moosey Teddy Rex. Ass on, fuck it, ass off. Ass on, fuck it, ass off. Ass on. Our guy Clay, the blue beret, with the very first line of the movie, kind of set the tone. He got outdone. I kind of feel like he had his ass off. But I think it was Sandra Hess as Andrea Von Strucker, Viper. Revenge is mine. It was her? It's got to be her. Who else had the ass on? Hasselhoff, Reno, I mean, <laughs> Pinsir. No, she really... <laughs> Not like her, though. She was on another level. Her delusional monologue at the beginning, I was like, okay, she's going for it, man. And the accent. Good Lord, the accent. She's going for it. It's an interesting way to put it. She's going for ass on. Like, she knew that we had this award, and she was going for it in 1998, somehow. <laughs> ass off. David Hasselhoff is the first person in the history of Cinephobe with ass off in his name. I don't think there's any other way to go. Ass off is the guard diving away from the explosion. <laughs> Are we sure we're not going with my man, Ron Canada? Racist. What? You're saying you're racist, Zach? What do you mean? I'm saying it means racist, too. This is like him thinking Steve James is the American ninja. Yes. I've taken a poll to the streets. Which roads have you taken the poll to? Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. I don't uh, go there. Malcolm X Boulevard. I don't go there. I drove on Obama Boulevard the other day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. For the third time or what? Did you, <laughs> it's a good joke. Anyone for ass off, whether you want it to be Hasselhoff or the guy diving away from the explosion, either way. What do you think, I mean? We'll give it to Hasselhoff. Yeah, we'll give it to him. Because ass off is in his name. I almost want to change it to the David Hasselhoff As, award. The, the asshole off? <laughs> ass on. Fuck it, Hasselhoff. <laughs> Remix. Somebody asked, hey, what's that song they use for that? Is that an original song? <laughs> God bless you, nerds. Well, I mainly eat out of a dumpster. <laughs> I should try that. I need some new dresses. Don't. <laughs> or if you do, stay away from the one in Ocean and Wilshire. That's mine. <laughs> Seriously. Stay out of it. Golden Dumpster nominees. I got Hofka on the plane, a blow dryer, the ESPers implants, the LMD latex mask. Viper's fourth wall breaking Manhattan joke, the face changing spray can, the human hologram projector, the head nurse to chief surgeon bit, or the clear winner to me, furious somersaulting entrance into the control room. (laughs) (laughs) That's what you're going with, Maze? (laughs) I'm going to remember that forever. I got to watch it again. It's so good. Somersault. (laughs) Laps his arm. (laughs) <laughs> uh, i mean oh man that, that's that's gonna be a hard one to top i'm looking through it again through my notes one more time trying to figure out whether i want to do that i'll have what she's having just as a bit that they kept coming back to the way everyone runs with guns <laughs> yeah if my guy the galloping gunman had gotten like a couple more scenes he would have been a contender <laughs> one more good scene the way she shot with the four barreled gun oh i i know what it is <laughs> Because it's in all caps. The only note I have in all caps. That's not how fevers work. <laughs> I'm normal now. My golden dumpster is going to be a meme thinking that Joss Whedon tweet was real. <laughs> 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 of old pile driving some woman <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> 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 With the Duke caption compl- saying, play this game, you piece of shit. New shit has come to light, guys. <laughs> there's been an, he, said, he said there's been an escalation in the Zack Snyder thing. <laughs> it's, it's funny because I saw the first two can play this game. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and then I, when they said, did you not read the caption? And I... Uh, <laughs> I'm just imagining him really calling. I mean, it's not even about the picture anymore. So I'm just calling Zach Snyder. Zach Snyder. Piece of shit. Shit. 
Picked it, motherfucker. Fober file. Oh man, yo, I fell asleep multiple times in this movie. Uh, there were moments when I was awake and I was laughing, <laughs> but for the most part, this movie was just like trip to fan for me. I'm a comic book purist. I love Nick Fury. <laughs> You're a comic book coward. <laughs> I can't. This is a phobe for me, man. This is one of the worst movies we've ever done. I really enjoyed it, but it, it's <laughs> is this worse than Troll Two? Troll 2 was pretty bad. Troll 2 was made by a bunch of random Italians in Utah with non-actors. And this movie was made with technically professional actors and writers and directors and stuff. And they're just equally bad. So I think that means that this movie's worse. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to phobe it. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm going to phobe it. Where does this stand in the pantheon? of the worst cinephobes of all time? Or is that a show unto itself that we should hold on to? Maybe that's a Patreon exclusive content there. Part of it's unfair to put that in the conversation because it is a made for TV movie. Yeah. It's a different level. It's like a minor league double a movie. Hasselhoff was better than I thought he was going to be. I was expecting him to be a lot worse. He was exactly what I thought he would be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's exactly what I imagined happening when I saw hit the picture of him with the cigar and the eye patch for the first time. I'm like, okay, I think I get this. <laughs> that movie, that movie poster does not lie. That thing is a hundred percent accurate of what to what to think. Sandra Hess was really spectacularly terrible, and I'm glad that we've covered her highlight of her entire career with this in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. As hard as I laughed at that somersaulting entrance, it's still a phob. Wow. Uh, wow. Another sweep, man. Superhero month. Super phob month. Yeah, I'm the only one that had, uh, had a like in there. <laughs> if you want to send us your phob file, ass on, ass off, golden dumpster, make sure you do it at Talk Hoops, at Darth Amin, at Corn Puzzle, at Count the Dings, or leave it in the old Discord if you're a patreon.com slash Count the Dings subscriber. Leave it in the in the reviews. On the old Apple Podcasts, juice those numbers. Keep refreshing those because we read them all the time, and then I think it helps us even if you refresh the same one that you've done already. Also, if you unsubscribe and then resubscribe, that helps too. That's what I hear. So yep, I hear it does. I do want to point out, being a Patreon doesn't just mean you get access to the Discord. No, you get all the special edition episodes that, Woo! like this month, we've got Daddy's Home for Father's Day that just dropped on Sunday. Daddy's Home 2, starring Mel Gibson. Poppy Talk 2. But also, guys, I feel froggy here, Zach. Maze. So froggy? Yeah, I'm a jump. July's special edition. You know we talked to the creators during the Freedom Marathon on Levitard Show. And I had a lot of complaints. I don't know if you got this, Zach. I got a lot of complaints from people who said, I stayed up for that cinephobe, and I, I took notes, and I thought we were going to talk about the movie, and you guys right. barely talked about the movie. I got a lot of those complaints. Guess what? What? We did the movie. What? Yeah. We did it. We recorded it already. It's in the can, and it is dropping July 4th mm. on the Count the Things Patreon. That's right. Mm. Patreon.com slash Count the Things. Not only Daddy's Home 2 that's out now, but July 4th, we give you the goods Woo! as uh, produced by Adam McKay, as directed by... Neil Brennan, and as broken down by Cinephobe, the number one movie podcast in all the land. Fuck you, Cinephile. Woo! Fuck you, other movie podcast. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah. Nothing personal, everything personal. How about that? Yeah, ascertain this, bitch. Next time we make love, you introduce me to Jade.